Hey, in this episode, I'm going to show you the secret to choosing wallpaper. I'm Erin Valencich, an award-winning interior designer and real estate developer based in Los Angeles. I've designed projects all over the country. In this episode, I'm going to show you the secret to choosing wallpaper. I'm really excited to show you how to choose and measure for wallpaper for any room on any budget. Click the link in the description to download my favorite wall covering styles so that you can follow along and take notes within the episode. So if you're doing wall covering or wallpaper at home, you definitely want this. This is going to help you select the right wall covering and learn where to install certain papers and where not to install certain papers. Let's get started. So when it comes to wall covering, there are so many amazing options out there. Uh, but the best way to choose is to request some samples and bring them into the actual room that you're going to be putting them in and look at them against the wall because the light is going to change in every different space. So something that you might like in the dining room might look terrible in the bedroom uh, and vice versa. Plus, if you have other fabrics or um, elements in the room that you've already chosen or that are already existing, you're going to want to see that color with it because there are so many variations and shades in wall covering. It's really important to pick one that has just the right tone that makes your whole room come alive as opposed to something that um, might end up fighting with some existing pieces in their space already. So I sometimes even tack them up or a lot of times they just stand up on their own and I'll look at it, see it at night, see it during the day, look at it in different times of day. Um, these are all papers that we've used in other projects. So you can see we use a really very complex method and just stick a post-it on it and staple the post-it to it so it doesn't come off. Um, and this is for the kids bath in one of our projects. Um, the, we're actually, I'm walking through that whole project in the bathroom courses and then also in the interior design course, um, the project, the three-story house that we completely remodel. This is in the kids bath. So one thing that I do want to note as you look for wallpaper is how it's sold and how you measure for it because this is really tricky and they're all different. So this is a vinyl, uh, which is great for a bathroom, which is why we used it in the bathroom, because um, it can get wet and the kids can't ruin it. It's very cleanable. So vinyl's great, and it typically is sold in a 54 inch width. So vinyls come very wide, about like so. Um, grass cloth, which is what this is, is typically sold in more of like the 30 inch range. Some of them might be 28 inch widths. Some of them might be up to like a 36, which looks to be about like what this is. And you can see here with the grass cloth, this is one width of paper. That's one roll and it's um, installed vertically like so in strips or in pieces. So when you measure for it, I do a really simple little line drawing. I measure the length of the room, the height of the wall, and I would do this four times for every single wall. If I'm wallpapering four walls, I would have four drawings. And then depending on the width of the paper, you just divide the width of the paper into um, the length of the room in inches. So this is 14 feet, so I would do 14 times 12 to get how many inches it is. Then I would divide it by 54 if I'm using this. Or if I'm using this, and let's say it's 36 inches, I divide by 36. And as you can see here, the installation, we have one, two, three, four, five widths of paper. And on average, the average ceiling is eight or nine feet tall. So that typically is three yards up. Nine feet is three yards. A yard is three feet, so three, six, nine. So I know that one strip or one width is going to be three yards of paper. So I have three, six, nine, 12, 15 yards if I was doing that whole door. So that's how much wallpaper I need for one wall in a solid color. Um, because there's no pattern on this, I need to actually buy less paper because the installer isn't trying to pattern match a giant floral print with the next strip. Um, so if you're choosing papers that have really big patterns, uh, that's known as the repeat, how often and the dimensions that, at which that pattern repeats on the wall, he has to line it up side to side. So if you have a big pattern here and the next one, it can't be down there. He's got to lift it up. So you might be losing a lot of paper and cutting all of that off. So if you're using a solid like this grass cloth, I would order 15 um, yards and we're good to go. Now this is also where it gets fun, is some wallpaper is sold by the yard. That's easy. So 
if it's sold by the yard and you need 15, you order 15, you're good. I always like to order a little bit extra, like maybe there's water damage or the kids come by with the marker or the dog scratches it or the painter messes it up, whatever it is, right? I always try to have at least an extra full strip or two on hand that we just covered in plastic, keep it in the garage, stick it under the bed. I just always have a little extra. Um, if you need more because of that repeat, you can, of course, have your installer measure this for you, but I always just kind of add an extra strip. So I would have bought, instead of five widths or strips, I would have bought six. Um, considering that the door doesn't take up any paper, that's all extra, which can be used as your overage as well. So as you calculate around the room, you know, this wall has three doors, so you can deduct that space that you're not wallpapering. I did wallpaper that little bifold door that really gave it a little bit more kind of of a hidden effect because there's three doors on this room. So this was a flat panel door that was here and he just came, stuck two pieces of wallpaper on it. We painted the trim as close as we could get to match and it just starts to kind of disappear into the room, which is nice. This wallpaper did roll up onto the ceiling because we have a cove in this um, room. And my plan is to just add a piece of molding, kind of applied molding, on the top of where that wallpaper meets the white ceiling, but we haven't gotten there yet. So when it comes to wallpaper and how it's sold, if it's sold by the yard, it's pretty easy. Most paper is sold by the roll, which is where it gets fun. So you have to look and they typically don't tell you on the papers themselves how it's sold. Like this one says nothing. Um, so you need to find out the width of the paper first to figure out how much you need. Then you ask them how it's sold. And if it's sold by the single roll or the double roll, a single roll is usually four yards. They all vary. So then you have to ask them how many, how many yards is in that single roll. And then if it's a double roll, it's somehow usually 12 yards of paper. Again, they're all different. It's super wacky. So you just have to ask. Um, sometimes it'll be priced as a single roll, but sold as a double roll. So they'll price it for, let's call it four yards on one physical roll of paper, but they're sold packaged together. So you have to buy two rolls. Why they don't just say it's 50 bucks, you know, they don't. They say, oh, it's this way and that way, and they make you do all this fall to roll ridiculous math to figure out how much wallpaper you need. And then once you figure out how much you need, how to actually buy it from them in an accurate measurement. So it's really confusing. So just always ask if it's sold in the single roll or is it priced as a single and sold as a double? And then you do the math. Okay, so maybe I'm gonna get 12 yards of wallpaper per every double roll packet I buy and I need 15, I'm gonna have to buy 24 yards of paper for this one wall, right? So at that point, you might as well wallpaper more in this space. So depending on the paper that you fall in love with and the way it's sold, um, you might have to buy a lot more than you want or you just put it somewhere else. Um, this paper is great. We've used it in many, many different projects. Um, you could wallpaper the inside of the closet. You could wallpaper a dining room ceiling with this. You could do a lot of fun with it. So that's high level, how we wallpaper, how we measure, and um, how it gets installed. You're always gonna see these seams and these breaks with grass cloth. It's part of the beauty and the natural beauty. With some other papers that have a little bit more pattern and um, print going on, Typically your installers, a really good installer is gonna be able to hide that, but just know upfront that that's part of the look if you're going with grass cloth, um, because sometimes it shocks some people. They expect it to look like this perfect seamless thing and it's just not. It's a natural material, there's variation, it's very textured, it moves a little bit. So that slight uneven element is part of the beauty of it. So if you don't like that, don't pick grass cloth. Go with something, um, with a pattern and a different texture that's a little more flat because then they can really, really easily uh, kind of hide those seams. Depending on the paper, some are thicker, some are thinner. Um, you're gonna have a different kind of installation uh, experience based on the type of paper it is. But think about when you're choosing your paper as well, how much water or moisture is in the space. Like I would never put grass cloth in a bathroom because bathrooms get steamy and very moist and there's a lot of water, right? So always go with like a vinyl if it's a heavy use bathroom with a shower. Um, if I'm just doing a powder room where there's no steam, there's really no water except for the sink, right? Um, grass cloth is a beautiful option and you can get much more delicate papers for those types of rooms than you would put in a kitchen or a breakfast room or a shower room where there's just a lot of steam and grease and heat 
happening. Um, something like this is definitely going to be a better choice than um, something that has that natural fiber in it. This is another fun paper that we like. Let's see. We also use that in that same project. This is the bedroom paper um, for our three-story renovation project. And I like these subtle papers that have a little bit of texture and pattern, but the color ultimately is a really soft neutral because you can layer anything on top of them over time. If you get sick of this black and white and beige situation, like I could bring blues or oranges or rusts or different colors into the room and be able to keep the same paper. But if you go with something, although it's really beautiful, I think we put this in the office, um, that's got more personality, you're kind of stuck with that paper. Um, as you might want to transition your space over years to come. So something to think about with your wallpaper, but I hope ultimately you wallpaper everything in your house because it always makes things better. If you enjoyed the video, please like it and subscribe to my channel. Also, don't forget to click the bell to be notified when a new episode comes out, as well as leave me a comment or a question. Check out some of my other episodes and tutorials here to learn about how to design or build a wonderful home. If you'd like to check out my complete kitchen design, bathroom design, and interior renovation courses, please visit my website, erinvdesign.com. Also follow me on Instagram at erinvstyle.